out in the city. Everything's right here. People are friendly. The traffic's so easy to navigate through. You can get there like that. Wait a second. Now we can get letters from our Chicago viewers about their traffic. Chapter 4 of your guidebook on how to survive missions starts now. We're actually 15 and a half miles north, which is really a gasp of breath considering the last few chapters of the show. All the way to pretty much nearby 40th and O Street to the Lincoln Crisis Pregnancy Center. Although, they're not going to be at that location for that much longer as we bring in someone you may remember way back from 2008. Explain your part as one of the hyenas in that skit. Explain my part? Yes. Well, every drama production needs a lot of energy. I was energy. And we now bring in Carissa Veith, and uh, what did you do with your hair, by the way? Much different than it was five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got tired of it, so. The great thing about hair is that you can do whatever you want with it, and it's not a permanent change, so I've gone a little wild. So obviously we've known each other for at, at least five years, probably a little longer than uh, that. Um, what, what have you been uh, up to since? Well, I uh, actually came on staff at the Lincoln Crisis Pregnancy Center when I was 21, so that would have been seven years, a little over seven years ago. And I have been working full time here, um, adding on to my responsibilities. I was hired part time, so adding on hours, and then I actually just recently took over directing our education program, which is the part of our ministry where we reach out to sexual risk avoidance, and um, basically how to avoid becoming a client here at the Crisis Pregnancy <laughs> Center. <laughs> so I've been um, speaking as part of that program, guest speaking at public and private schools and faith groups ever since I was hired here, but I just recently took over directing the program, trying to grow and expand it and get more of the message out, get more time with you, because studies show that um, the amount of time you spend educating about a specific subject has a direct impact on how much it affects their behaviors. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to get um, a lot more time talking with youth um, so that they can avoid making some of these unhealthy choices that land clients in here. And we'll, I'll, I'll go more in depth as the interview goes on. But um, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think back, though. When we first met, like what? Oh six, oh seven, somewhere on there. Somewhere. I don't even remember, <laughs> don't even remember either. It just. It it's just kind of gradually. Wild. The yes. friendship kind of started to uh, slowly blossom, mm -hmm. but obviously, I've known you. Uh, been here for pretty much much of the duration of the mm -hmm. time you've been here. Definitely. So this is kind of fun to actually kind of dissect uh, with you in terms of the ins and outs. Um, of this, and uh, thank you for guiding us here through uh, what we call Chapter 4 uh, of this uh, terrific series. First off, the Lincoln Crisis Pregnancy Center, define and explain. Alright, the Lincoln Crisis Pregnancy Center is part of a movement um, nationwide that began after abortion was legalized in 1973. Um, a lot of people in response to that decided that we needed to start serving women who are in situations that cause them to consider abortion. So our main focus, the reason that we exist, is to help prevent abortion. 
since um, abortion is, some, is a decision that a woman makes, um, and she doesn't make it in a vacuum, she makes it in context of the relationships that she's in, her family, her partner, her financial situation, um, the way that we can help prevent abortion is by addressing the needs of the woman, by serving her, by giving her factual information, and by showing her that someone cares about her and someone is there for her. So we're trying to um, find specific needs they have that might be outside of the realm of what they came in for. Maybe they came here just for a pregnancy test, mm -hmm. but through the time we spend talking with them and getting to know them, we realize they actually really need a job, or they really need help finding somewhere to live. Um, or maybe they need a lot of encouragement and support just in their lives. Maybe they don't have very many people in their lives that are encouraging them and building them up. So we try to fill those needs as well and serve them as a whole person. And by doing that, um, bring them closer to God and also help prevent um, their baby from having to go through an abortion. Right. So this kind of, so basically what you're saying is this is more than just um, um, dealing with the uh, inner person developing, so to speak, mm -hmm. of the person, but we're dealing with basically the entire picture mm -hmm. and trying to really pinpoint the true problem exactly. of the issue and just attacking it instead of just making some, coming up with some solution that could potentially make it worse. Yes. That better. Yes, exactly. Um, we're a woman focused ministry. Um, so we're focused on the women who come in here, and by serving and loving them, we hope to prevent them making a choice um, that they'll have to live with the rest of their lives. Women in focus ministry? Yes. That's what I'm not here. We have male clients as well. So we actually we have lots of um, boyfriends, husbands, fathers, grandfathers who come in for help for their um, significant other or for their children. So we serve men as well. Now, I was looking on your website and the things that you've done. First off, is your nonprofit, is that right? Yes, correct. Okay. Um, looking at the things that you offer, um, obviously you provide education, you're involved with that. Mm -hmm. um, you provide pregnancy tests, you just mentioned that. Mm -hmm. uh, you provide, um, what else do you provide? Well, um, one of the other main services we offer is our free ultrasounds, and we're actually the only place in Lincoln that offers a free ultrasound. Oh, free. I was about to say, not even Brian LGH. <laughs> oh, that, you can oh, get free. a lot of places, <laughs> but they cost around three to four hundred dollars if yeah. you don't have insurance. Um, and most of our clients don't have insurance, and so that's a huge hurdle for them. Mm. The main reason we do this um, ultrasound for our clients is that a lot of times a pregnancy can seem incredibly overwhelming, but also it can be hard to connect emotionally with what's going on. You can't see it, you can't feel it yet, <laughs> so it can be hard for them to really process emotionally what decision they should make and how they feel about it. Having them see an ultrasound, see an actual picture of their baby, see the heartbeat, you can actually see the moving heartbeat on that ultrasound screen helps them connect emotionally with what's really going on. And once they see that baby up there and realize that that's my baby, mm -hmm. that can really help them know how to make a healthy decision about the pregnancy, whether that be parenting or placing for adoption. Mm -hmm. So along with our ultrasounds and our pregnancy tests, we offer options counseling. So we're going to be talking with our clients about the different clients, the different options that are available to them and what each option would mean. The majority of our clients choose to parent, and we want to support them any way we can with mm -hmm. that because they usually have a lot of obstacles to parenting that can cause them to consider abortion. So we're going to um, provide them with material support, so that means they can come in for free maternity clothes, they can come in for free baby clothes and diapers and other baby supplies. We also offer two different parenting classes. One of them is for first-time parents and one of them is for parents who already have young children who are maybe struggling with how to parent their two-year-old or their five-year-old or whatever. So we want to help equip them to be good parents through our parenting classes. And then we offer just continued support throughout the pregnancy. Um, whoever they saw when they came in to do their pregnancy test um, is going to keep in touch with them and give them phone calls or Facebook messages or texts or whatever the client is most yeah. comfortable with. I was really hoping to actually possibly getting a, because uh, I was hoping the new center will be done by the time we actually shoot this. Apparently, um, so we can have it 
nice little tour, kind of get the get the mm -hmm. jigs to the place for the folks. It, but it's not done yet for some reason. What happened? It's not. Um, the building is a little bit older, and it was empty for a couple of years, so there was a lot of interior construction that needed to be done. And we decided while we're getting the building up to code, we might as well make it exactly what we want. <laughs> For our client services so we pretty much gutted the whole first floor and started over with new walls and everything um and just so things like that finding termites having a roof leak <laughs> different things that happen when you're renovating an old building mm -hmm. um construction is just taking a little longer than we assumed it's nothing bad it's nothing like terribly unexpected but and what's really cool is we were just getting ready to add on to this building and hadn't raised enough money to do that, so we're trying to decide if we wanted to take out a loan, if we wanted to wait, mm -hmm. how we wanted to handle that, and he approached um, Patrick McCarthy, our executive director, um, the guy who was in charge of handling the yeah. building, and approached Patrick McCarthy and said, we'd like to give this to you. And we're just like, you mean you want to you want to give it to us for less than you would ask? You mean you want to trade buildings? I mean, they're like, no, we just want to give it to you. You can sell your current building and use the profits for your ministry. And that was incredible. That was one of the most amazing things that I've seen financially since I've been here. Obviously, as a nonprofit ministry, um, we're always dependent on God. Mm -hmm. And we never know where the money is going to come from. <laughs> um, we don't have any government grants. No government funding comes to us. Yeah. And all of our services are free. Um, so God always provides, which is incredible, but this is probably one of the biggest ways I feel like God is probably just trying to show off right now. <laughs> Flucking those muscles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Guess what? I can give you a whole building. <laughs> Three times as much square footage as you have now. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> but not all of your work um, that you do with Lincoln Quest Pregnancy Center takes place here, does it? Uh, the majority of it does, yeah. but no, with our education program, we're usually going into schools, mm -hmm. um, into churches with youth groups or house groups or whatever, mm -hmm. and speaking to them in their environment. Um, we do a lot of outreach with our clients. A lot of times we'll, we'll visit them mm -hmm. or whatever, um, but the majority of it does happen here at our building. Right. You do see the education in the schools and churches. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? <laughs> Sorry. El uh, elaborate. Talk about uh, kind of things that you kind of pinpoint okay. when you make your presentations. Definitely. Um, when we go into a public school or a private school or a youth group, we are using the weight training curriculum, which is a curriculum. 200 pounds. No, I'm joking. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's spelled W A I T. Oh, so wait. Wait as in. <laughs> <laughs> self-control. <laughs> so this curriculum was put together by an organization called the Center for Relationship Education. They're based in Denver, Colorado. And they put together this curriculum that's based on teaching abstinence, teaching healthy relationships. And so it's focused on positive character building aspects and how to build a healthy relationship and what that looks like. What we're telling kids is your sexuality is about a lot more than just your physical body. Your sexuality is physical, intellectual, emotional, social, and spiritual. So your sexuality is about all of who you are as a whole person. And it's a good thing, and it's a powerful thing, and the decisions that you make about sexual activity are going to affect all of you. going to affect you physically, but also affect you intellectually, your mind, how you think. Um, emotionally how you feel, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about others, and socially how you relate to people, what your relationships look like, um, what kind of people you're friends with, what kind of partner you're with, how your partner treats you, um, and spiritually your value system, what you believe about your purpose here, um, what your faith is, um, what you believe is right and wrong. So all those parts of your being are going to be affected by the decisions you choose to make sexually. So what we're telling young people is your sexuality is important and it's powerful and we know that you want to have healthy relationships. We know that you want to um, have healthy intimacy. We know that you want to have relationships that satisfy and bring joy instead of bringing pain and heartache. And this is how you get there by avoiding sexual activity outside of a lifetime committed relationship commonly known as marriage. Um. As we close, um, um, you are, 
you're really a person who has really kept yourself busy um, um, through all these different responsibilities here at the center. Um, what exactly is it that really drives you um, when you continue to uh, pull out the mission here? Um, a lot of what God has done in my life has laid the foundation for why I'm even here in the first place. Um, I went through a very hard time in my life when I was in my teens, and God pulled me through that. And there were times I didn't think I was going to make it, and He gave me hope, and He gave me joy again. There was a time in my life where I didn't think it was possible to be happy again, and He gave that back to me. And what I see when I see young women walk through the doors of the pregnancy center here, I see people who are dealing with some of the same things as I did. Um, maybe not the same situations, but the same heart issues are there. There are people who um, have lost hope, people who are in intense emotional pain, people who feel alone, who feel abandoned and betrayed uh, and empty and don't think anyone really cares about them. And because of the experience God has brought me through, I know there's hope for everyone. And I know that there is someone that loves them unconditionally and can give them the life that they desire, regardless of the choices they've made or the choices other people have made that have some destruction in their lives. And so what really drives me in this ministry, um, because it can be exhausting, it can be really overwhelming, people's needs are way more than I could ever meet, than we could ever meet here at the Pregnancy Center. We can't fix everyone's problems and that can get really overwhelming. But when I sit in a counseling room across from a woman and she starts telling me things about her past and she looks at me and says, I've never told anyone this before. And I realize that she's trusted me with something deep and painful in her life and then I get to allow the Spirit of God to speak words of love and affirmation and healing to her. And I see the tears start rolling down her face because she has felt loved and touched in a place that has been empty and in pain for so long. Um, that's what drives me. That's a kind of high you can't get anywhere else. <laughs> so being able to love women and being able to show them that God loves them is really why I'm here. And the other people who work here, the volunteers, the staff members, have similar stories. I mean, it's obviously not about me. It's about the work that God is doing here. But to get to participate in that and be a part of that and know that there are children here on earth that wouldn't be here without this ministry. And there are women who have been healed and have felt the love of God that wouldn't have without this ministry. It makes it all worthwhile to me. Well, Chris, it's been uh, very much of a pleasure to not just have you for this particular chapter but to actually having having known you for several years i mean i'll be honest i i think i met you after you went through your uh um dark period but since you've went through it you've always been uh joyful always with a smile mm -hmm. always welcoming ne never afraid to meet new people. You kind of you kind of like a social butterfly almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a testimony to the work of the spirit because mm -hmm. I wasn't like that before. Well that's awesome. Chris Aviv, Lincoln Crisis Pregnancy Center. Uh, it's been a um, it's great to have you on. I Thank you. appreciate your here. time. Thank you. Well of course it's great to be here. You work here. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be on this segment. Yes. <laughs> And when we turn the page, we're going to take a look at how a church runs and funds missions on the flip side. Chris, has there been any like um, lighthearted moments at your deals? One really funny thing that happened to me one time was a client came in for a pregnancy test and she was a friend, which happens a lot. Because all of us have a natural resistance to evangelism. We don't like putting ourselves out there, making ourselves vulnerable. When we see the program failing, that justifies, uh, I, don't, I don't have to do this, I don't need to be evangelizing, and until they get that stuff sorted out of church, I don't, I don't need to be sharing the gospel with my neighbors.